What's up, y'all? My name is Ian Edwards. Welcome to the Soccer Comic Rant. I'm in Costa Rica, and I should be happy, but I'm not because of the result of Manchester United 2, Sevilla 2 today. And it's just not the score. It's the people we lost and how much or how long we're going to lose them for and the repercussions for the rest of our season. So I got on my Real Madrid shirt as me and Lee Hudson, stand-up comic from England, were discussing, and it's to wind up uh, Neil, Chelsea fan, if he joins. What's up, Lee? I'm all good. I'm all good. I literally just walked in the door from a show. Um, <laughs> you know, it is on a Thursday. <laughs> um, right but I'm here. I made it. Um, big week of uh, big week of games we've just had as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just, because I'm just like the impact of what happened with United today in the Europa League is just really hitting me as we talk it's kind of bringing me down like after the game like so i'm in costa rica uh, what's up to everybody who's listening on omni studio spotify and itunes and wherever else you listen because people be listening places i don't know but thank you for listening but if you're watching on youtube please like and subscribe i'm in costa rica that's costa rica in the background and uh so we're hoping this wi-fi works it's good so far so <laughs> Like we had just gotten to the hotel and and earlier. So we got to the hotel and we flew last night, like at midnight. And it, it, it's funny, first you get to the airport and we check in. I had to, we had a whole bunch of trouble checking in. I'll just I won't even bring that up. But once we and we we got there early and we're chilling. And then we said, let's walk to the gate. And let me tell you something. That gate must have been in another state. The walk to that, I've never been to this part of the airport where the Valoris terminal is. It's, it's an international terminal. So I guess there's all these airlines that are not, that you never really hear them talk about it, which is good because you don't want them to mention any of these airlines because if they do mention it's because something bad happened. So I've never heard about Valoris, which is good, but where it they put it, I felt like we were just going to come out in Costa Rica and we didn't have to get on the flight. That's how far we walked. So if you're ever in LAX and you got an international flight, go straight to your gate. Don't think because you checked in and you're there that you're going to catch your flight. You could miss your flight after you check in. That's how far <laughs> that shit was. Neil, but, uh, Neil's just messaged saying he's on his way to LAX, so he won't be joining us. He won't be able to see your show. Yes. Oh, he's going to India. Yeah. Is this it? Oh, okay. Damn. Yeah. All right. So, also, I'll wear, I'll, I'll wear it around it tonight. It's, I'm sure there's a lot of <laughs> Costa Rican Real Madrid fans. <laughs> That's hilarious. But yeah, so we, we went to this bar once we checked in at the hotel to get something to eat. And, uh, you know, the, these people that I'm with, they have, they, they, they just like Costa Rica. But the beauty of going to like a South American country to, for a destination wedding is what's one of their favorite things? Soccer. So it's going to be on. And so at the bar, they had on the Roma versus, I forgot who Roma was playing, Europa League games. So I'm like, did United play it? Or if they, are they, are they going to play after this? And that, uh, luckily they played after that. And I got to watch the first good half of the game at the bar that I ate at. Some good food right by the beach watching man united go up to nothing the mistake was a halftime when i walked back to the hotel to see excuse me to see if i could see the other half of the game that's when shit went downhill because the reception on the screen was like old school snow like you could make out everything but that's it you could it was like a blind a blind man seeing you know when you you you, like, you can see but not good enough to drive. It was, it was like that shit. Like, it won't give you a line, just that channel. And uh, it was just mayhem. But yeah, United 2, Severe 2, and we lost Bruno. He got a yellow card that he didn't deserve. Uh, so then he's missing for the next game. We lost Varane. We lost... Uh, Martinez for God knows how long. We don't have Rashford. That happened from the game before. 
So this end of season, shit, Spurs might finish top four. Like, that's how quick things could change in football for your team and the trajectory for the season. It's a good thing we won the, the whatchamacallit cup already. And it's a good thing. I started the season believing that we wouldn't get top four and that we're going to get it the next year. So, uh, like, there's other United fans who are going to be way more hurt than I am. But at least what I expected to happen might happen. And hopefully I won't be as disappointed as I could be. But the good and bad news is that we still scored all four goals in the game. The two goals that Sophia got in the second half were all, both own goals, one off Malassia, one off Maguire. And uh, they say Ten Hag, when he substitutes, he has a high rate of substitutes scoring goals. Well, that has continued. The substitutes that he put on the field, Maguire scored the tire, tying goal for, uh, for Sevilla. So, yeah, that's where we're at. So, great first half. Everybody was balling. Uh, we still didn't hold on to the ball as much as I wanted us to in the first half. Like, sometimes our men directly passed it to Sevilla players. I don't know why. I don't know if they wanted the fun of trying to get it back. But I don't know why we did that. But in the second half, we definitely lost some of our composure. And um, I don't know why they put in Weghorst. I don't know. Maybe it's because they didn't want to have Marshall play. He's just getting back. And he's not. And he breaks down easy. So it's like, let's let's rest him a little bit. And I, and I missed when they subbed him because I was walking back. And I missed when they brought in Ilanga, and it's like, it, I, I just don't think you should have bring, bring in Ilanga. Like, I, I don't know if, let, let Sancho keep playing. Like, you just need, you, you can't sleep on any team. Like, United beat PSG when we were at our worst. <laughs> Key players at PSG, and they'd beaten us the game before, and we knocked them out of the Champions League when we shouldn't have been in that shit. So you just can't, take chances with team you got to kill them off so unless you got the players to kill people off some substitutions had to be made but there was some that probably didn't have to and they were made and uh so ten hog is a little bit at fault for getting us ahead and for getting us to draw but uh, yeah those are my thoughts and i'm hurt and i'm disgusted and i'm worried about the weekend and the rest of the season because we got some serious issues. Because, yeah, we got some serious issues. Yeah. I kind of feel like um, you, you were so close to wrapping that game up today. Um, like there was the couple of chances at 2-0 in the second half where Anthony cuts inside and shoots and it comes off the inside of the post. Like if that hits the top corner instead or the one when the ball sort of bounced around the box and Veghorst laid it off to Malassia and he just shot straight at the defenders who were on the goal line. Like if either of those chances go in and you go 3-0, I think the game becomes more comfortable. Um, I think that rocks Sevilla, but then they, they got one goal back and as soon as they got one goal back, they were like, oh shit, we can, we can do this. Um, and you just saw them like lay siege to your goal. De Gea had to make that big save down to his side from the um, from the header and uh, yeah like as soon as they got one you could just see oh no they got the momentum now like they're gonna they're gonna come hard and and throw the kitchen sink at this game when six minutes got announced you're like oh no this is you know this is gonna be tough for him um, yeah that's six minutes jesus mm. yeah it was a killer and both the goals they scored as well like just hugely fortuitous goals <laughs> Um, the deflection off Malassia and then the deflection off De Gea, uh, of De Gea, sorry, off um, Maguire, Maguire to, take, to take the ball past De Gea. And like, there's nothing he as a keeper can do about either of those two goals. Like, they're just unlucky. Like, but to happen twice when you're 2 0 up, to have two goals like that against you is, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard. I don't even know if I've ever seen that before. Like, <laughs> two own goals in a half. Like, I've seen in a half <laughs> to tie a game with the, that the team who's got them is down to nothing. I, I, I don't remember that in football. And, and I want to be angry at Maguire, but it's, I don't think that shit is his fault. I, I'm yeah. just angry, period. Yeah, it, it, it's not his fault, but it's the irony is Maguire can't even head a ball in the opposition's net on purpose. 
<laughs> and then he does us by accident. So I guess we just got to take that. Now you want to do the perfect header, bro? Now? <laughs> Jesus. But yeah, I, 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 you know, hope the fans aren't going to like try to kill him. They already don't like him that much. You know, but uh, this is tough. <laughs> and then, yeah, now we'll see. Hopefully Luke Shaw, Luke Shaw picked up an injury last game. So he would be our backup left, like <laughs> central midfielder. And so we got to hope he's back because we can't, Maguire, Maguire and Lindelof doesn't work. One of them with somebody else mm. kind of does. But, and if I was his coach, if Varane and Martinez ain't available, I, it would be Lindelof and Shaw. Mm. Like Lindelof has turned in way better performances than Maguire. I, I, I like how uh, Ten Hag has respect for players, but it's almost too much. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's, 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 this could be detrimental if you start Maguire ahead of Lindelof, if Martinez and and uh, what you might call it are out, it's like how much damage or mistakes does he have to make to give somebody else that spot? If you um, if you have to play Maguire, you should allow Gareth Southgate to come in as your interim manager for those games because he's the only manager that Maguire ever seems to want to play well for. <laughs> So just get He's Gareth in for a couple of games. Just say to Ten Hag, you be assistant today. Uh, we're going we're gonna to let Gareth see if he can uh, stop this from being a shit show. <laughs> Magu- my, uh, Gareth Southgate is the Maguire whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. He can get him playing decent. But or can he? Like, Maguire gave up that goal against Italy in international. But the, the next game he was better. But yeah. yeah. Jesus. <laughs> uh, so I was traveling yesterday or getting ready for travel. So I didn't see Chelsea versus Real Madrid, but so just tell me your version, how you, how you saw this. Cause I was waiting to hear it from both of you and then interject <laughs> <laughs> and kiss this badge. But uh, <laughs> I could still do it. And I, mm-hmm. oh, I mean, Chelsea turned up with like a, a, a pragmatic setup, which I can understand. Um, mm-hmm. They played like three cent midfielders who aren't like number 10s or anything. They played Kante, Kovacic and uh, Fernandez. Um, so none of those guys are like a, an attacking midfielder. They all just sort of sit there. Um, from what it looked like, I think Fernandez was the higher of the two, but like Kante obviously goes box to box. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of the setup. And Jao Felix and um, Sterling were the forwards. Uh, they played with wing backs, so yeah, um, they set up like that. They looked okay. They had a chance on the break early on. Felix went through one on one and ended up just sort of going a little bit too far wide and then shooting tamely. Um, so that didn't really cause them a problem. And then, yeah, Real Madrid and Real Madrid, they like they find ways. Um, and you know, they were coming forward with the ball and ball got put over. Um, I think it was for Vinicius Jr. Keeper made the save, Kepa, and it's just, you know, Benzema, he, he'll be there ready to gobble that up if a keeper pushes a ball out. Like, he's that sort of striker. Mm-hmm. He'll, he'll, he'll pounce on anything. He, he's, like, one of the most ultimate penalty box strikers there is. Um, so, yeah, he was on and hand for the rebound. He, he's, no, he's no Lukaku. <laughs> like, I watched Lukaku the day before yesterday, and once the, somebody takes a shot he's never thinking let me pounce like mm. he's got his arm up complaining that it didn't the pass wasn't made to him and it's like Lukaku just keep moving bro like how yeah. long do you have to play football to know that you should keep moving instead of like throwing it's almost like it's an excuse for him to like steal some time to relax by mm. gesticulating and it's like yo, you, those are goals you're throwing away yeah that's what you see with like those real top players that they can see the possibilities like two, three steps ahead. So they know where they need to move on the off chance, something might happen. And that was what he did. Like he carried on running through the middle. And as soon as Kepa made that save, he was like, he was right there. And you know, right. it looks like an easy, it looks like an easy goal to tap in, but right. you've got to be, you've got to be mentally 
switched on in your positioning and your reading of the game to be in that position to just make it an easy goal. Like it's an easy goal because he's smart. Um, and yeah, they got that goal. Real Madrid were on top. Chelsea, yeah, they made a little bit of effort. And then it was that ball over the top um, where Cucurea got caught out. I think it was Rodrigo got the wrong side of him. And then Chilwell's had to come over on the cover. And he sort of just put an arm across and brought him down. And I don't think he needed oh. to do it. Um, I think it was Gary Neville was saying afterwards, he's like, was it Neville or Carrick? One of them was like, that's what your keeper's there for. Like, that's what your keeper gets paid for to face shots. So, you know, he's not clean through and definitely going to score. Like, he's from an angle. Let him take the shot. Make mm-hmm. your keeper earn his wages. You don't need to do that there. Um, it kind of but, felt like a bit but, of a, a stupid foul. Like, Cook like, have you seen Kepa keep? It, it's little, <laughs> but also, right, Cucurello, this could be a great... I, I, I assume Real Madrid scored, but Kepa is good at penalties. So it's like, maybe this is a tactical foul to make it a penalty, so Kepa will have a better chance of saving it. But I'm not going to say... The- but well, did it outside. The did it outside the box as well. Mm. Um, but he was last player, so it had to be a red. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, it's like he was outside the box. Let 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 him take the shot. Um, it's yeah. Like, as soon as they went down to two 0 as well. Uh, sorry, down to ten men, they were fucked. Like you could see the two 0 coming. Mm. And oh, okay. it was a good. It was a nice little move off the corner. Um, they sort of played like a little sort of corner into the box low, and then it got laid off to Asensio, who just lashed it in. Lashed it in low. Um, there was another chance Modric had where he sort of opened up and tried to bend one top corner and it just went over. So, yeah, Ramjet had other chances as well. You know, Chelsea battled. Um, and it's not it's not completely game over. If they can score a goal first half at Stamford Bridge, the game comes alive. But you're asking Chelsea to score a goal, um, which at the moment seems to be... <laughs> Uh, they're almost as bad as Southampton when it comes to that shit right now. Uh, like that, that, yeah, you just don't really see any confidence from them when they get in the final third. So um, that's that's the big issue for them. And uh, yeah, Lampard come in on a two for two losing streak. Um, exactly what they brought him in for. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> Listen, galvanize all for two. <laughs> exactly. They got that new manager slump. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> I haven't that's seen I haven't seen I haven't seen a new manager slump like that since Nathan Jones. That's the yeah. only person I've seen come in and do badly yeah, straight away. Oh, um, but you know, it is what it is. Obviously, Wolves was a game they should have done better in. But Real Madrid at the Bernabeu, you kind of you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hit Frank too hard for that one because it's a tough tough game to go and play. So um, if, if yeah, Frank, I, 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 I can't. If Lampard couldn't coach. Chelsea pass Wolves at home. There's no way they're going to fly <laughs> across the sea to beat Ancel- Ancelotti's Champions League champions in the Bernabeu at Real Madrid's home when you can't score goals. Period. So yeah, you're, yeah. you're right. Like like Frank knew when he lost to Lopetegui <laughs> this weekend. There's no way he's beating Ancelotti. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, and then, like I said, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that Chelsea could turn it around, but I don't think they will. This Real Madrid team are too smart, they're too experienced, I think, to let this let this slip now. They'll they'll probably do what they need to do in that second leg and, and get the result. Um, but, you know, I mean, I kind of hope Chelsea score first in that game just to make it a game. So that as a neutral, I get to see, right. uh, you know, I get to see some fight and a game that means something because... If Real Madrid score first in that game, then good night. It's it's done. Uh, I, I kind of think it is already, but we'll see. We'll see. Did Sterling do anything at all? Did he look dangerous um, in the moments? He, he, forced a, he forced a good save out of Courtois from across. The cross came in and he got across the front of the defender and sort of towed it towards the corner and Courtois had to make a really good save. Um, so that was probably the closest he came, uh, I would say. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, Sterling, Sterling, I think he's he was just so suited to what City were doing. They kind of had him playing sort of in the half spaces, like off of, you know, Aguero and people like that. And he was able to just get in the box. And yeah, when you've got players like De Bruyne around you, just feeding you the ball um, and making chances, life's, life's easier uh, <laughs> than than coming to a team like Chelsea, which are just, they, they just seem so low on confidence as well when they're out there. Um, 
and yeah, it must be a real um, a real shock going from City where everything's a bit more stable. You've got Guardiola coaching you. All of a sudden now you've got Lampard coaching you. Um, it's yeah, it's a bit of a step down, but I'm sure he's uh, I'm sure he's not regretting anything. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Well, let me ask you a question. I feel like I want to ask you a question, but I want to say something first. Uh, it's about Lukaku. Like Lukaku, if a Ballon d'Or winner who's older than you is chasing second chances and not gesticulating and throwing his arm up, then you have to also. And as far as Frank is concerned, like his record has not been good since he's been back. He's 0-2. But then he could say, hey, you fired me for Tuchel. And he's <laughs> one and two at Bayern after he just got fired from the job you hired me to. Well, he didn't replace Tuchel, but yeah, he would be like, you, you consider Tuchel a good coach, but he's one and two. So, yeah. Uh, did, did Frank play a three at the back? Uh, yeah. So that's the question. Is, is he normally a three at the back guy? He's never done that really before. Right? He didn't do that originally uh, at Chelsea. No, he's more of a like a four-two-three-one yeah. coach. But um, I think for this game, he realised that wing backs and a back three probably made more sense um, to try and you know give some more protection with that Real Madrid front three of Rodrigo, Vinny Junior, and, and Benzema because that's a dangerous front three. So um, yeah, I think he was trying to make sure they didn't get too stretched. And Thiago Silva was back, which you know he did some good defending at times, but. <sighs> Yeah, they just got pulled apart a little bit in those uh, moments for the goals. I want to ask you who were the, the three at the back and who were the wingbacks? Uh, the three at the back was, it was Thiago Silva, it was Fafana, and I think um, Kukurea was the, uh, the left of the three. Oh, no, it was um, Kulabali, sorry. And then um, Kukurea came on. Because yeah, it was Still James and that. James and Chilwell with the wing backs, Felix and Sterling up front, Kovacic. So he's playing and the and same. Chante. He's playing the same system that the last two managers who failed right before him played. Mm. Because he's playing like this is what. Uh, this is what. Uh, the prof college professor Graham Potter was doing, and this is what his stand-in did for one or two games, which also frustrated Neil. And then Lampard, who's not even used to doing this, does it. So, yeah, it's not, it's, it's not a good start to get that call wrong, you know, because <laughs> you got to come get your players back on board with you after that. So. Good luck, Frank. Uh, did you get a chance to check out the uh, any other Champions League games? Yeah, I've seen, I've seen all of them. Nice. Cool. You could you could tell me about it because I didn't see none um, of these things. I saw. I did see Bayern, Man City. I did see Bayern, Man City, and uh, yeah, like Bayern impressively dominated uh, by and I, I was kind of happy about it. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of happy about it. And uh, let's see how the people who fired Nagel Nagelsmann must feel good today, better than Sevilla feels after leaving <laughs> Old Trafford. And uh, <laughs> and then, you know, if, if this team Bayern doesn't win next week and they crash out, this is, you, you just watched so people who run an organization slap themselves in the face after they went to the toilet with no tissue and wiped their asses with their hands. Like this is, this would be crazy. So I, I, I want Pep to go through and, and do it up there just to see Bayern, which is such a well-run organization and they're always above like anything like this, just to see how they deal with this shit. But uh, what's, what's your thoughts on this game and these other games? Yeah, I mean, City were just impressive. Um, 
you know, they don't always play Bernardo Silva, but I mean, when they do, he shows up like he 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 had a world class and, and game. on the right. Yeah, yeah. And on, that's that, that's where he played when they first like started winning everything. Mm-hmm. And I know they had to get Mares in there, but he's that's just his thing, man. The fat right, yeah, is yeah. Yeah, and, and Grealish is looking like a Man City player now. I think the last mm-hmm. like month or so, he's really started to like look at home in that Man City team now. Like he always looked a little bit awkward, like he didn't quite belong there at times in the past. Like even though he had good games here or there, he didn't really look like he was fully comfortable mm-hmm. with the way they play and everything. And now he's just he seems settled and he's looking like the player they spent the money on. So. You know, you got him on one side, Bernardo Silva on the other side. Bernardo Silva was doing everything as well. He was pressing, he was running at people, mm-hmm. he was getting assists. He scored a head. He scored a header. Like you know, it's a, like Bernardo Silva is having the game of his life when he scores a header, um, mm-hmm. which yeah, just crazy. And the Rodri goal was insane um, for for a holding midfielder who's a ball winner to just get the ball from like twenty five yards, shift it onto his left foot, and then bend it top corner. Um, it's crazy. That's not the sort of goal you expect to see from him, but that and was he's right footed. Yeah. So um, that's crazy. Yeah. And then obviously Harlan scores because that's what Harlan does. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was just a very yeah, typical city performance. But Bayern had chances. They just didn't ever seem to have that edge when they got in front of goal. They were hitting it straight at Edison. Um, like mm-hmm. Sane had a couple of chances. Um, and I haven't seen the incident, but there's something about Mane, like headbutt Sane or hit him or something, left him with a fat lip. Um, I thought that happened in the locker room. That happened in the game. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, no, I, think, I think it happened in the locker or on the way. I don't know exactly what happened, mm. but I've, I've seen the story about that and I've seen the pictures of, uh, of Sane. So I'm like, oh, shit, that's, uh, yeah, Bayern not really, uh, not really uh, sort of, a cohesive unit right now. You obviously got you mm. know um, the the managerial changes and stuff happening, and yeah, apparently mane has been suspended now. So it's um, yeah, not all, all is not well at Bayern, it seems. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they got they got schooled for most of this game. Um, you can't really see City throwing that lead away. Um, you know, it's Guardiola in the Champions League and City in the Champions League, just so they might. Um, who knows? And you never know, like sometimes when a club's in crisis, like Bayern, they've still got quality in their team, so they could all rally round right. and, and pull a performance out. But again, like the Real Madrid-Chelsea game, like City really should be taking care of this second leg. I can't really see it turning round, barring a big, big, big performance. Um, so yeah, and this win could have been even more because Sommer in goal for Bayern, he pulled off a couple of amazing saves as well. So yeah, um, yeah it definitely could have been a could have been a worse game for him. Who else did we have? Uh, Inter play? Benfica. It's the two Milan teams. There was Inter Benfica and Milan Napoli. Uh, Inter Benfica was interesting because I thought Benfica played a really good game uh, for most of the game. They created a yeah, bunch of did. chances. They couldn't quite finish them off. Um, Roger Schmidt is a manager who I really want to see in the Premier League. Um, he built like a really good reputation in Germany at Leverkusen. Um, did a really good job there. And then he took the money and went to China for a little while and mm-hmm. managed a team out there. And then he came back and he was PSV uh, manager in Holland, did a really good job with them. Now he's at Benfica. Mm-hmm. He's doing a really good job there. He's one of these like modern German coaches, like loves pressing mm-hmm. and high intensity and, and quick football. So I, I really want to see him in the Premier League at some point, but I love the way his Benfica team play. Um, you know, he's got like the veteran, João Mario, he was doing some stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you kind of saw the inexperience with Ramos, the forward, though. The one that Man United have been linked oh, okay. with a bunch. The one who played well in the Euros. He he had right. a couple of decent chances. He and he snatched... up, yeah. yeah, sorry. Woke up. Uh, he had a couple of decent chances and he snatched at them um, and mm-hmm. could have done a little bit better. And then Inter, I mean, it was crazy. that The left-sided defender for them, Bastoni, he put in a ridiculous cross for the first goal. Um, and then he put another one in later on that they almost scored from, and then they got a penalty, and Lukaku um, stepped up, scored the penalty, um, and that was it, 2-0. Um, 
Benfica <laughs> almost got one back towards the end. But yeah, that's that's a big win for Inter away from home as well. The second legs at the San Siro. So you'd expect Inter to finish the job at home. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, the other Milan team, AC Milan, they beat uh, Napoli 1-0. Napoli without uh, Osimhen. Um, he yeah, was out yeah, injured. I, I heard Osimhen was out the day before. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's a big that's a big blow for them. Yeah, and Kvarat Shkelia uh, missed a big chance at 0-0. Um, and then, yeah, Milan pinched the goal. Uh, that one is probably the game out of all of these Champions League games. That's the one I think that's most open mm-hmm. going into the second leg. Obviously, it's the, the smallest scoreline. And obviously, Napoli at home as well. They're, they're more than capable of turning over a 1-0, especially if Osserman's back. Um, mm-hmm. So that'll be, that'll be a, an interesting game to, uh, to watch the second leg of. But I kind of want to see... Uh, Milan derby in the semi final. That'd be pretty oh, cool. You do? Yeah. Because hmm. I think if, if the that... two if the two if the two Milan teams end up facing City and Real Madrid, we ain't seeing a Milan derby in the final. <laughs> um, right, right. Maybe one of them. Maybe one of them might get through. So fuck it. Let's have Milan derby in the semi. Let's have both of them get through. Milan derby in the semi final. Real Madrid against Man City in the other game probably. Um, although Real Madrid Man City I think would be a a worthy final yeah I like that yeah I like that but that's assuming these uh, guys get through so <laughs> alright and then uh, let's I guess we don't have much we can see like what's what's up with this weekend's games and then uh, I can just get back to Costa Rica in you know what I mean? <laughs> Since I'm here, yeah, it's like right behind me and stuff. And <laughs> there's like there's like a welcoming party at seven, which is a nice forty minutes. And I'm sleepy too from traveling and all night. Like, <laughs> so I kind of if I took a nap now, I'd probably sleep through that shit. <laughs> but I'm I'm kind of fading. I got to be honest. It's just it's a lot. Let's see. Let's see. Who's playing? That, that that injury, man. Those injuries. Like our season has just, you know, just thinking the worst. Our season has just changed. Like <laughs> Villa could pass us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, at least they got like, their they, they new they castle this weekend. <laughs> only the only the only uh, saving grace is that and. So that's a true test for both of them to see yeah. like these are new teams in a new space for them. They both haven't been like this high on the table at this time of the year in a minute, and they're going to face off against each other at Villa. And uh, I, I just hope they both make each other drop points. Uh, <laughs> because just especially based on our injury, we just need both teams to drop points at this point to just help us stay in there and maybe get us some distance. Because even when we get to our <laughs> game, we might still be able to to pull it off this week but for the upcoming weeks we need we need teams to cut themselves to help us out <laughs> <laughs> and you got crystal palace what do you think of your odds against crystal palace i mean hodgson's due a bad game surely surely um they've been playing so well recently um, you know, I mean, I'm sure you want to want us to do it for the memory of, of Patrick Vieira. Yes. Um, <laughs> but I mean, we're playing essentially against a mediocre team and we're at home, which is the sort of <laughs> game we lose. Um, so, but I mean, there's players I'm worried about in that Palace team. Michael Elise is in great form right now. Edward's scoring, mm-hmm. even Ayu's scoring. Eze's back in the team and balling out. So... Yeah, they've they've got more firepower than we have. That's just my worry in most Southampton games is that we're, how are we going to outscore the opponent because we don't have goal scorers. We can't defend fully for 90 minutes in most games. So, um, yeah, I can see Palace winning it. Um, I'd love to be proven wrong. Um, right. Three points would be massive for us to give us another little bit of hope, but I'm not sure if I even want that. Because I keep having that every few weeks. Like, we lose a bunch of games and then we win one. And I go, oh, actually, maybe. Maybe we could do something. Like, maybe there's, you know, there's some green shoots of recovery coming through the dirt here. 
um, and then we go and lose a bunch again. Um, it's the hope that kills you. Uh, so maybe I don't like want us to win you this game. support a team. It sounds like you're supporting a team that's a narcissist who gaslights you. <laughs> and that's not healthy. <laughs> Yeah, or just like a woman who, you know, wants to constantly tease you, but ain't never going to mm-hmm. sleep with you. They're just yeah, like, exactly. oh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> nice like, shirt, oh, no, bit... Lee. Yeah. Nice, <laughs> nice haircut, Ian. <laughs> I don't want to hear from oh. you, China. You're not, you're not, I know you're not, you're not sleeping with me, so I don't know, I don't want your compliments. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and I think Chelsea Brighton looks like it could be a good game because Chelsea need a reaction for, who? <laughs> for the neutral. Frank, che- Chelsea need a reaction, and Brighton a you know Brighton a Brighton right now. So yeah, Brighton be brightening it. They, did they mm. lose to Brentford on the weekend? Uh, no, that was uh, Newcastle beat Brentford. Brighton lost to Spurs with a penalty. Oh, that, that should have been. Yeah, they got ripped off. So oh, yeah, they played. Chelsea's they played okay angry. in that game. Yeah, Brighton's going to be angry. They, they, <laughs> you know, they're going to take the the referee's apology and shove it up Chelsea's <laughs> ass, like <laughs> at St- at Stamford Bridge. Like, yeah. So yeah. I mean, I listen. I like Frank Lampard. I want him to figure this out. But if they lose three in a row under him, <laughs> it's like <laughs> you you think how many games are left in a season? For Chelsea, not many. Let me have a look at the uh, table real quick. Um, I think eight games. How many games in a row would it take for Frank to have to lose for Bowley to be like Frank? We got to fire you. <laughs> um, yeah, they got eight games left. So who knows? Um, you know, maybe. Uh, I don't know what they do in that instance. Do they? Do they put? Bruno back in charge, the the old interim, or do they do they ask Potter to come back for a few games? Do they, you know, do they do they dust off Avram Grant? Is Avram Grant still alive? Can they get Avram Grant back? Yeah, yeah. Or Gus Hid- or Gus Hiddink, one of the <laughs> <laughs> one of these old recycled uh, Chelsea interim managers. I don't know. Um, I don't, yeah, yeah. Gus or Poyet? Is it was it Poyet? Who, who's the one that won with them? Who won the Champions League? For oh, Di, Di, Di Matteo. Di Matteo, yeah, yeah, yeah. This would <laughs> that that would be bad if they had to fire Frank. And it, yeah. losing three in a row is close to we got to fire Frank. It's because I would say take five games, five losses to be like we have. This is going to be a strong consideration. So if they lose this third one, we, we you're in. Let's fire our third manager for the year <laughs> territory, and that is chaos. It's, absolute chaos so i mean i like brighton so i'm kind of rooting for them uh what do you think about arsenal versus west ham does west ham stand a chance are they going to drop more points i know what you want i mean yeah i mean i I want arsenal to win just because i want them to win the league and i want west ham to be in trouble with us so um (laughs) west ham are just a weird team right now though they're a weird team in that like you know they'll play us and they'll win, they'll play Newcastle and they'll get thumped. Um, and then they went and beat Fulham away, which is a tough game to win. Um, so like they, they've got players who are capable of causing Arsenal problems on their day. But Arsenal at the moment, you know, I think they Arsenal have got that focus right now. Um, they've got that swagger. Um, and I know they, they obviously drew with Liverpool, but Liverpool... At Anfield, like we said on the last podcast, you know, they can do that. Um, so I think Arsenal should have enough um, to go out there and, and get the three points in this game. But, you know, West Ham, I think, will. I have a feeling West Ham are going to make them work for it. I don't think they're going to roll over. I don't think it'll be like a three or four nil. Um, I think West Ham will make it tight. But I think Arsenal, like I say, they got that focus and that mentality at the moment. I think they'll grind it out, even if it's a 2-1 or something. Um, I think Arsenal will come away with a win. Yeah, I'm just listening to what you're saying. I'm looking at this, and I was like, I think this is a perfect game for Arsenal after dropping points to Liverpool, and they mm-hmm. it's a game they have to win if they think they're going to stand a chance to win the title. And a lot of people keep pointing to certain games to see where Arsenal could lose a title, like the game against Man City, the game against Brighton, the game against Newcastle. But, you know, you know this could be 
one of those games, you know, or one of these other games that makes them lose the points as opposed to the ones that I just mentioned, but uh, uh, which kind of contradicts what I'm saying. I feel like, like there's a reason why West Ham is at the bottom of the table this season. The way they are and how they've been playing is who they are. And then where Arsenal is and how they've play, been playing is who they are. So they should go and beat this team easily, especially with uh, Man City breathing down their neck and it just get them back on a winning track, which is where they need to get and start like this last eight to seven games of momentum rush towards the title. So, you know, Moyes doesn't change much. He doesn't do much. You know, he's just a, he's just a one style or one stop shop for a style of football and uh, the youth, the energy, you know, you know, West Ham is doing so bad, like Declan Rice might cost 50 mil by the end of the season. Like that's how much his price is dropping. So, you know, but yeah, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Arsenal. Cause, and if they lose it, then they just pretty much lost the title. Because a few more games, Man City will catch them. Uh, yeah, I can't. I can't Manchester. see Leicester causing City any problems this weekend. Yeah, it's like how, like, I mean, you know, weird shit happens in football. But somebody would have to explain this to me before it happened, while it's happening, and after it happened. If Leicester did some shit to Man City, <laughs> yeah, because who's who's Leicester's, Leicester's coach now? Is he hired? Dean Smith, yeah, confirmed. Dean Smith brought John Terry in with him as well. Yeah, it's just, this is, this is set up for man. And it's at, it's at the Etihad. Yeah, it's like, yeah. like, like uh, if Man City lose this, they're doing that teasing thing to Arsenal. We're like, <laughs> yeah, we're going to make you feel you're going to win the title. Then we're going to make a mad rush <laughs> and win this. Or we're just going <laughs> to... Blow these people off the park and let you know it's on. I'm gonna breathe down your neck <laughs> for the rest of this. So yeah, it's, I think I think be, it's more likely to be that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. Me too. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, this is so funny that wondering what happens between Leeds and Liverpool doesn't even matter. <laughs> it does, but it does. It, it matters more for Leeds than for Liverpool. Yeah. Like yeah. that's how much. That's the type of season Liverpool is happening. It doesn't matter what happens to Liverpool in this game. It matters what happens to Leeds because Leeds could drop more and get in a relegation zone and be relegated. I don't know where that. Let me check and see where they are. But it's it's weird when you're at this part of the season where titles mm. are being collected and it doesn't matter what the Liverpool does. It matters about the other team, and that's crazy. Yeah, because technically, if Leeds lose against Liverpool and Forest and Everton get some points, if Forest and Everton both win, they could leapfrog Leeds. Obviously, yeah. you'll be hoping Forest don't win. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, yeah, Leeds, exactly. Leeds, Leeds, Leeds need points to to stay out out of that out of that zone. Yeah, and as a as a United fan, I want Leeds to stay up, and it's not just because of the, the American guys, but I was just thinking, we just played fifteen years in the Premier League without like one of our biggest like rivals as i'd be cool to have them around to kick up to kick up once in a while and beat (laughs) them and sun them you know what i mean so leads let's uh yeah and and one of yeah let's let's do some damage to liverpool right the clock is still going to keep his job make him drop a point or something (laughs) do something uh, you think there's anything else we should discuss? Um, no, I think that's it. How, how are you feeling against uh, Forest? Shit. You know, Forest is like that wiry guy. You know, there's, there's skinny guys and then there's wiry guys. You'd rather fight <laughs> a skinny guy than a wiry guy. You <laughs> know what I mean? And Forrest is in like wiry mode, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, even when you beat them, that shit ain't easy, you know? Mm. Like, I don't, st- they get blown up, blown up away a little bit by a few teams here and there, but 
Yeah. Yeah. They they they're energized a little bit. They don't want to go down. Yeah. So yeah, they're and they got they you know it's a it's a loud atmosphere at their place as well. They like mm-hmm. you know the fans get behind yeah. them. They don't like they won't roll over for you for sure. I'm sure they'll make it tough for you. I still think you'll win, even with the players you're missing potentially. Like you should still have enough quality in this game. Well, let's go um, over this. So, suppose Rashford is out, right? Mm-hmm. Martinez, Varan, and who else? We got Ericsson. Is, Ca- is Casemiro still banned? No, his ban is over. Today was the today was his, today was good well, because today, he got to play before tomorrow, before yeah. the weekend. You know, so his ban is up. Ericsson is back, but we got no Rashford, no Martinez, no Varane possibly, and we pass the ball out the back. And those guys, Varane and Martinez, are mm-hmm. press resistant. We put in a Maguire, you know, and <laughs> we put in some of the pieces that helped us struggle last year. And even with last year's team, people would think we're supposed to beat a team like Forrest. But go back and look at last year's schedules of losses, and it was to teams like that because of starting players like that. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little worried. I'm more worried than I was before today. Because today, mm-hmm. today was great. because. Even though Rashford wasn't there, you got to see so many players who hadn't played in a while and they were playing good. They're like, oh, everybody's back. It's on now. Great for the end of the season. And then in one half. So at least yeah. like, you know, you got like like Sabitzer took his goals with some confidence. Right. Um, and Anthony looks like he's playing a bit more consistent right now, like he's making a bit more happen in games. So Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think you should have enough in this game. Right, people to step up, and I have a feeling Varane will be back. Martinez, maybe not. That looked nasty. Yeah, um, just one of those ones where he twists it on his own. But yeah, I think you'll have too much for Forest. But again, like I say, they'll make it tough for you. At least you don't have to get up too early uh, for the game. <laughs> yeah, are you hoping? Yes, hilarious. Are you hoping will be too much for them for you to help you out? The misery loves yeah, of course. Down there? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, 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 crabs in a bucket. I want, I want as many people <laughs> like down there with us. Even though I don't think we're gonna have enough to do it. I, you know, the longer we have a chance, then you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, though, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I do want all these teams to win to just put us out of our misery, relegate us as soon as possible, and I can no, just no, stop. Man, keep fighting. I can just stop the stress. Then <laughs> I can enjoy. I can enjoy my trip to the Emirates next week without having to worry about <laughs> even winning the game. Um, oh. <laughs> let me ask you a question who has a tougher schedule because that's really that's going to Arsenal or City like uh, I feel like it's Arsenal I mean Arsenal still got to play us so that's a guarantee three points um, uh-huh. <laughs> now let me have a look um, I mean they got West Ham this week I mean they've still got to play City and Chelsea um as well, and Newcastle and Brighton. Yeah, that's tough. Um, and then the last two games are Forest and Wolves, which they should win. Wolves is at home as well. Right. Uh, it's at the Emirates. Forest is away. But yeah, that, that run where it goes City, Chelsea, Newcastle, Brighton. I mean, who knows what Chelsea will turn up for that game. But Chelsea like a game against Arsenal. They show up against Arsenal normally. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they won't want another London team winning the league. Uh, so yeah, I mean they play yeah City, then Chelsea, then Newcastle away, and then Brighton. Um, that's a tough run. I mean they've got us before that, so they get to start with a soft one. Um, but imagine if imagine if we go to the Emirates and get a draw or something, yeah. or or even a even a win. I mean it ain't going to happen. But imagine we go to the Emirates and get a win, and then they know that the next four games is City, Chelsea, Newcastle, Brighton. That's yeah, then we'll we'll really see what this Arsenal team are made of mentally. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, even if they beat you guys, we'd have to see what they were made of, like mm. to play. Though. That's 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 rough. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a big run of games, um, yeah, and big. you know, the City games at the Etihad that'll be that'll be so huge. That's a midweek one as well. That's on a Wednesday, um, mm. 
uh, it's an evening game, an 8pm one. Um, what day was that? The 26th. I'm just checking if I've got a show that day because <laughs> I've got a show and it's in Arsenal territory. Oh, well. <laughs> That's but the show's right. at seven. The show's at seven p.m. I'm probably mm-hmm. going to open the show, and the game starts at eight. So <laughs> I'll go watch it in an Arsenal pub. Uh, the Hilarious. City Arsenal game, and uh... don't. <laughs> <laughs> and that's against. That's a, that's them against who? Chelsea or uh, least... City. City. That's oh, Ar- yeah. Arsenal City at the at the Etihad. So that'll be Etihad. yeah. That'll be a big, big game. Um, that's on the 26th of April. So that one's coming up in uh, yeah, a couple of weeks. And that Newcastle one's going to be tough because Arsenal could not beat Newcastle at home. Now you got to go where those fans are riled up and they're in the <laughs> top four. They want to keep that yeah. spot. They, those fans are give them, going to give every piece of Newcastle <laughs> energy to those players. And those players are playing above and beyond as it mm. is. As like, yeah, yeah. So that's bananas. And then you know, we, we're looking at talking about this, like Man City had a part of the season where they were winning games, but you're like, this ain't like, they're not playing that good. They're not in sync, but they're winning. You're like, eh, you know, like Arsenal's wins were more convincing. Now Man yeah. City is in that form where they're just winning from the beginning mm-hmm. of the game to the end of the game. And like, if you could give, they win it in a way where they should get more than three points with those wins. Like that's yeah. the level that they're <laughs> at right now. So, so that they, this, this is, this looks like they're revving up. They're, they're yeah. revving up. What's, what's, what's City's next games? Like, um, and also they, they've got Leicester and then there's two cup games. They've got Bayern second leg in the Champions League. Then they've got Man. they've got uh, Sheffield United in the FA Cup semi-final, which they can rest players for that one and win that game mm-hmm. easily anyway. Um, and then they've still got to play Brighton, but that one has been moved because of the FA Cup game. So I don't know what date that is. They got Fulham away, Man City against West Ham at home. They got Leeds away, no, Leeds at home, sorry, Everton away, mm. Chelsea at home, Brentford away is their last game. So there's there's a couple there that are potentially banana skins, but that's not a that's an easier run in than Arsenal had for sure. Yeah, I feel like I just heard. Win, 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 win. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they just disposed of Bayern. Nobody on that list is on the level of Bayern. Mm. And a lot of those games you just mentioned are them at home. So I know football's funny. You can't just say it like that, but that yeah. is, that's, that's facts. You know? Yeah, on paper, on paper, City for sure got the easier run. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... That's why we love yeah, this game, though. You don't, you don't know if that's what will happen. <laughs> Shit. Man, this is... Yeah. I mean, Arsenal could beat City and still lose the title based on yeah. just how that run is lined up for both of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I hope that's what happens so people don't... People will still say Arsenal bottled it, but I don't think if Arsenal doesn't win that they bottled it. Yeah. Compared to last season, it's still an improvement if they finish second. Yeah, yeah. And you have to learn to win something, you know? Mm. You have to to learn. Like, Liverpool had to learn to win. They had to, like, lose the league yeah. by a point to win it by, you know, yeah. a margin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and right now, most of that Arsenal team, they're trying to learn on the job. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, like you say, that's that's hard. Yeah, that's hard. I, I just want to say one thing. is, And, and it's football-related, but... <laughs> It's not related to this. And I don't, I don't want to see if it's just me. So <laughs> this thing about Deli Ali Pop. I really apologize to Martin because when he used to say how good Deli Ali was, I was like, yeah, he's all right. But Martin used to be like, he's going to be one of the best in the world. And blah, blah, blah. So this highlight package of Deli Ali Pop stuff. And that motherfucker, and, and I'm going to talk about him like he's 40 years old now because that's how he's playing now. He's only 27, but that's how good he was at like 19 and 20. Like the package was like, he was, first of all, he was nutmegging people for free, for like, for like nothing. Like, and, and I always knew he was like one or two touch player and let go the ball and, and set something up and it was just crisp and be, but this motherfucker was amazing. But not only did I notice that in the package, but 
like, you know how we hold Spurs in a, like, Conte had a disappointing season with Spurs, even though they're like, mm. they were still in the top four when he fired. Because I, I, we, I think it's bad because of, you know, how we talk about Man City, the way they're winning now is better than the way they were winning in the earlier on in the season. And the way mm. when Spurs win now, it's they're shitty wins. Like they're, they're low quality wins, but it's three points regardless. But and then we but the reason why I think they're shitty wins is because I keep associating Spurs with the Spurs from like five, six years ago. And because Harry Kane and Son are still on the team, it kind of feels like they still have all the players from back then. But when I was watching the Delhi Alley highlights, I'm like, I understand Spurs more because mm. on that team was Ericsson, Delhi Alley, Son, Kane, Vertonghen, the other Belgium, and uh, uh, Walker, and and yeah, Trippi- Trippier, Dembele, tri- Trippier, uh, yeah. and Dembele, and, and Dembele, and it's like if you compare that team to now. Spurs is ex- has actually overachieved. Like, they have overachieved. Like, the, the team now is over. There's, that team couldn't hang with that. The team now could not hang with that team back then. Like, that was quality through and through. Like, they Spurs should be struggling. Like, they got shitty wing backs and right backs. They got shitty central defenders their midfield is not on that level like Ericsson had a heart attack died on the pitch and plays and is still playing for Man U and would still be better for Spurs than whatever they got now you know it's like so I think when when a team buys players from a lower team or on a team buys we just think they're better or on the same level but no, nah, this Spurs team is lacking. And I understand Conte's frustration more from seeing the Delhi Alley highlights and who he was playing with on that team. And Spurs fans, you actually are, to be fifth with this team compared to the team, if you had that team from before and you were fifth, I would understand. But this is not that team. This is a, you have two guys there, three, the goalkeeper, Kane and Son. Everybody else and Dyer, it, all the world class players, they're playing for somebody else doing world class things. <laughs> you know, so I get it. You got anything you want to wrap it up with? Any last thoughts? No, just, uh, yeah, just my dilemma of I don't, like I say, I don't know if I want Southampton to just get relegated as quick as possible or if I want to cling on to that hope which I know will probably result in more hurtful disappointment um, but no I mean I'm, I'm already looking at who's potentially going to be in the championship next season what teams are not going to go up and you know look at what grounds I might go visit some games at um, <laughs> but no I mean I, I'm more excited for other shit than Southampton right now like these <laughs> You know, these, these, these big title games that are coming up, like we've just spoke about the runs they, those teams have got, that City-Arsenal mm-hmm. game, I'm excited for that. Um, so, yeah, at least there's, there's plenty of big games that I can just distract my own shitty team performances from and watch and enjoy these Champions League games as well. Mm-hmm. Um, these Europa League games too, like, you know, that I think whoever ends up in the final of the Europa League, that's going to be a good game. Um, Might not be us. <laughs> it might not be right now. Um, this is a semi-final, right? I think this so, yeah, because it's um, it's sporting it's sporting Lisbon. Oh no, no, I think it's quarterfinal still because Roma Quarter played final, final yeah. and yeah, sporting yeah. Lisbon are still in as well. Um, they're playing Juve, and then the, yeah, Leverkusen drew one-one with um, Union SG from Belgium. Yeah, Juventus beat Sporting one 0 and then yeah, Roma. Yeah. Played Feyenoord and and lost one nil. Feyenoord's manager Arne Slot is um, he's been linked with a whole bag of Premier League clubs for the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, loads of clubs want him. He's got Feyenoord like the best team in Holland right now. They're top of the league. Mm-hmm. 
they're tearing it up in the Europa League. So, yeah, like I said, I think whoever makes a final with this, um, at least Europa League, that'll be a good game as well. So, um, yeah, like I said, plenty to look forward to. I think it's going to be a fun end to the season if I take my own team's stuff out of the equation. I don't if, I, if, I'm, if I'm just being a neutral, there's, there's a lot of interesting stuff to look forward to. Uh, a lot of big games to look forward to. Um, so, yeah, I'm glad I've got that as a distraction. <laughs> You're welcome, man. You're welcome. You, you know, you could, you know, you know how <laughs> I be rooting for, you know, Southampton low key. Root for, man, you low key sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it helps. Well, you know, I, I hope you at least get to Europa League final. I might try and go because the last time United got no, to Europa sure. League final, or not Europa League final, because you got to Europa League final against Villarreal, didn't you, and lost. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the thing is, I wasn't at that final. I was at the Europa League final mm. when United played Ajax in Stockholm in 2017, and, and you right. won. So, if you get through to the final, I'll try and go, try and bring you some good luck. Um, right. <laughs> I think it's in I think Appreciate it's in Budapest that. this year in Hungary. Um, mm. So, yeah, I think there's a couple of comedy clubs there right now as well in English. There's English speaking comedy clubs all over Europe right now. It's mad. That's um, crazy, right? Yeah, I got yeah. a friend. She's in Austria, and uh, she's. Uh, I talked to her online, and she's doing shows out there in English in Austria. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. She's... I've done English shows in Barcelona, Stockholm, Paris, Berlin. Um, there's a big scene in Amsterdam. There's some stuff in Prague in the Czech Republic. Mm-hmm. There's stuff in Austria, Switzerland. Uh, some bits in Italy as well. Um, stuff in Madrid. Like it's because everyone, everyone's got those... Netflix and YouTube now. So right. they've and, all and seen comedy. All right. And, and are they getting it? Is it tough to translate? Or um, I don't think you can be too specific with cultural stuff. Like they'll get some of it as long as it's a widely known thing. Um, and the audiences are really like a real diverse mix. Like when I've done shows in these European countries, there's been like Americans who live in those countries. There's been British people that live in those countries. Uh, there's been East, like when I was in Barcelona, there was Eastern Europeans. There was people from Iceland in the show, at the show. Oh, um, there were people from like all over, um, mm-hmm. and like you know they 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 all speak English, so they all come to the shows, and you get a real international vibe to it. Um, well, I did one show in Berlin that was mainly English and American people, and I felt like I was performing at home still. Um, oh shit! I was like, oh, I, I can make any references here, and these people will get them. It's fine. <laughs> Um, but it's good fun. Like the, the scenes are really new. They're like a lot of them are emerging. I think Amsterdam and Berlin are probably the two of the older scenes in mm. Europe. But um, but it's really fun. It's you know it's cheap to travel to from the UK. So more and more more and more comics are doing it right now. And I'm I'm like I said I've, I've been to a handful of these cities and trying to go back to some of them. I'm trying to visit some new ones. Um, right. And if I can combine that with some football, um, oh, even better. You know, I managed to sneak into the the new camp when I was in Barcelona um, the other week for those yeah. uh, for those shows. So um, I didn't get to see a game, but yeah, if I can combine it with some uh, some football. When I did shows in Berlin in October 2021, I went mm-hmm. and watched Hertha Berlin in the Bundesliga against Freiburg. So I managed mm-hmm. to to sneak some football into that trip. So yeah, it's um, that'll be uh, <laughs> a thing I'd like to do a bit more of is uh, catch a game and. Uh, yeah, when I did Paris as well, I went to PSG Marseille and then did a spot in Paris as well, which is that's a, it's fun, fun stuff to do. You, you're living the dream life, stand up and football. <laughs> what else? You, you don't need nothing else. You're good. This, <laughs> what you, you've, you've goddamn cracked the code. <laughs> well, I, I got it in LA as well, though. You know, I got to do some spots in LA yeah. and then we went to LAFC versus uh, versus Portland as well. So, got the football fix everywhere I go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, stand up. Yeah, you're cracking the code. You, know I mean? <laughs> you can't. You, if somebody said, what, "What would you like to do in the future?" You're like, I'm doing it. <laughs> More of this shit. Yeah. That's it. Uh, long may it continue. Man, long may it continue. That's the old shit. To be honest, uh, I'll just plug that. Uh, go on my Instagram at Ian Edwards Comic, and I got some shows coming up. I'll be at the, the Zanies in Chicago and Nashville. And I got the La Jolla Comedy Store coming up. And I'm going to be at the Mothership, uh, Joe Rogan's Club. So go to at Ian Edwards Comic and click the link in the bio. And nice. all that stuff will be there. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for watching. We appreciate you. Hope your team 
wins unless it's playing ours. One. 